All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the first match with Panhar Monument. I'm going to struggle saying that at the beginning of every game, I suspect. We're going to mulligan this. Oh, no white. Why so much blue? Um, I guess we're going to keep this. Panharmonicon on top. I think we have to bottom it. We really need a planes. So we're going to play an island and pass. We're going to be desperately hoping for our planes sometime soon. The worst thing about playing budget decks is not having access to dual lands like that one. And we draw an island, of course. Point of place an island, draw a panharmonicon. Well, that sucks. Let's uh, let's just draw a card with the sanitarium. Can we hit a planes? Thalia's lieutenant, no. So we'll discard Sun Scourge champion since it has eternal eyes anyway. Yeah, so just not being able to play dual lands is frustrating. It just, they break the budget by themselves before we even start building the deck. So yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's frustrating. Because we have very few islands, but it looks like we've drawn all of them. Punna cycles a hieroglyphic illumination. Okay. Play another dual land and pass. We draw planes. There we go. Um, I think we're going to go into Panharmonicon, though. Um, is it going to be countered? Opponent's thinking about it. Okay, it looks like it. Negate. Okay, that's fine. Opponent plays a Westfield Abbey. I wonder if they're on a similar monument deck. Whoop, we draw land. Play Oketra's Monument. And then we can pay one for Thraven Inspector. Get a warrior token. Get a clue token. Cast out. Targeting, I'm going to guess, who catches monument. Yep. Okay, that's fine. So it looks like we're playing against a blue-white control deck. Um, it's going to be difficult. Uh, our deck does kind of rely on playing things. Cloud Blazer. Hmm. I think we're going to go into Pious Evangel, though. See if our opponent counters that. I mean, it's just life gain, right? Not a big deal. All right, it resolves. Let's try to run out a Thalia's Lieutenant as well. That also resolves. Okay. So we gain two life that turn. Uh, we pump up some creatures. We're going to attack for three. Opponent goes to 17, maybe. Yeah, okay. So yeah, th I don't know if we're going to see this deck at its uh its best against the control deck obviously because they're going to be countering everything glimmer of genius our only hope is just to get things in play get it let them resolve opponent cycles of sensor as well so our, our only goal here is just to get things in play hope they resolve and then start turning them sideways that's kind of the uh the strategy against control decks it's kind of funny actually let's see what we draw and i'll i'll ramble about that dust to dawn okay we can go to uh go to combat first swing with everything turn everything sideways Torrential Gearhulk, so that's kind of painful, actually. Targeting a Glimmer of Genius, so they draw two. Um, the, the funny thing about Blue Control is that, from their perspective, and I played, I've played like every type of deck by this point, so I've seen it from everybody's perspective. Uh, they block a Pious Evangel, sure. Uh, they go to 13. So our opponent's tapped out, so let's play Dusk and kill that Gearhulk. I'm okay with that, not the worst use of that. So the funny thing about the blue control perspective, and at this point, I've played every type of deck. I've seen it from every perspective. But people who have only ever played blue control and nothing else, they look at creature strategies and they're like, oh, it's so dumb. All you do is play creatures and turn them sideways. And it's like, that's true. But it's only true against blue control. And every other uh, matchup, you know, it, it, co creature combat is very complicated. There's a lot of, you know, uh, we're going to attack with everything. It, it just, it's kind of funny that from the blue player's perspective, it's like, Oh, well, that's such a dumb strategy. All you have to do is turn things sideways. But in my experience, it's kind of the opposite. Uh, Blessed Alliance. So we have to sacrifice something. Probably just going to sacrifice the token. Uh, we're going to play Cloud Blazer. Draw two cards. Gain two life. We're at 24. Um, three of an Inspector. That's not bad. Could use more cards. It's not that either strategy is simple. It's just that the creature versus control matchup is simple. With two control decks play against each other, it's very complicated. Descend upon the Sinful. Don't see that that much. So exile all creatures and put a 4-4 token into play. Hmm. But it, yeah, it's it's only the blue control versus uh, creature or aggro uh, matchup that's that simple. We're going to play the Raven Inspector. Get a token. Going to play uh, Planes. I think we're going to play Cloud Blazer. See if it resolves. Opponent is playing something. Essence Scatter, okay. But yeah, it's really only uh, this matchup where my strategy just feels stupid. Because normally I'm not just playing things and turning them sideways. Uh, we're going to take 4, go to 20. And again, as someone who has played Blue Control in the past, uh, Blue Control matchups are just 
Uh, they're mentally draining. It's so complex. We're going to draw a card. Uh, get an O-Catcher's Monument. Okay, we're going to play that. Negate. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we're just going to attack for one. This game is starting to get out of hand. Uh, again, uh, this is a bad matchup for us just because we're kind of a mid-range deck. Which means we give the blue control player lots of time to fill their hand with counters before we start doing stuff. They put a creature token into play with Westville Abbey. Opponent attacks for 5. Sending us to 15. We draw Thraben Inspector. Okay. Um, yeah, let's run Thraben Inspector out. It resolves. We get a clue token. Um, let's play Handware Militia Captain. See if this resolves. Opponent's thinking about it. That's not good. Oh, that does resolve. Interesting. So this one might not then. Uh, they definitely have counter spells up. And this is going to give us four creatures. So they'll flip. Yeah, it looks like they're going to going to counter. Oh, no. Glimmer of Genius. Okay, so they do not have counter spells in hand. Unless they draw one here. That's good to know. So we can uh, kind of just go crazy next turn, I think. Crack some clue tokens. Hope we draw into some. Oh, wait. Torrential Gearhawk. Oh, that's uh, that's good information though. They did not draw a counter spell. They're having to use um, Gearhawk to get a negate or an essence scatter. Okay, so this doesn't look good for us. We're um, we're about to get our face smashed in. But the the good news is we can do whatever we want next turn. We just have to hope we don't draw into a bunch of lands with those clue tokens. All right, opponent attacks for nine. So we'll. We will definitely chump the Gear Hulk. Take 4, go to 11. Don't draw a land. Uh, we do draw a land. Well, we can cast Dusk. We'll live for this turn, and then we'll have a full hand. And we know they don't have counters. Or not Dusk, Dawn, sorry. Um, we'll cast Dawn. They do have counters. Okay, no. They're drawing two cards. So searching for counters. Hopefully they don't get one. They do not. Okay. So... So we're going to play Thraben Inspector. I think the plan next turn is to get the Pious Evangel in play. And then start gaining tons of life. We have 7 lands. So we can play the Evangel and the Sun Scourge Champion. Uh, opponent attacks for 9. So we're going to chump the Gear Hulk again. Take 4. Go to 7. Draw a Plains. Okay. So we'll play the Evangel. Gain 1 life. We will play... Handwear Militia Captain, gain another life, play Sun Scourge Champion, gain 3 life. So we're back to 12. Our board state doesn't look nearly as bad. We're going to pass. I'm not going to attack. Um, I don't want to lose the Militia Captain and I want the Thraben Inspector to chop the Gear Hulk. So we're just going to pass. Put a cracks a Blighted Cataract to draw some cards. I'm sure. This game is going on for a while. Opponent attacks for 9 again. So we're going to, um... So we're going to chump that Gear Hulk. We go down to 8. Our opponent plays a Glimmer of Genius. Drawing 2 more cards. So they could have counters at this point. They have a full hand. 7 cards in hand. Opponent's playing something. Fumigate. Alright then, well... Okay. We draw a Pious Evangel. Okay. So we will play that. Gain 1 life. Go to 9. We will play Cloud Blazer. Um, is this going to get countered? Disallow. Okay. The good news is we have Sun Scourge Champion in the graveyard. So we can play that if we draw lands. We also have three clue tokens sitting here to draw cards. So, you know, it's still not great. They have five cards in hand. But, um, we do have ways to get back in this. Um, opponent passes. We draw a Dusk to Dawn. Um, let's crack a clue token. Draw a Sun Scourge Champion. Um, yeah, let's try to run it out. I don't know how successful this is going to be. It does resolve. Okay. So we go to 12. Our opponent is at 19. We will attack for 2. Opponent goes to 17. And we will pass. We'll crack a clue token at the end of our opponent's turn, probably. Opponent cracks a Blighted Cataract for 2 more cards. Um, Fumigate. Okay, well, sure. So they go back to 19. We draw a Panharmonicon. Well, that's kind of interesting. I think I'm going to play that, actually. Yeah. Play Panharmonicon. See if it resolves. They have six cards in hand. They might let it resolve. They do let it resolve. Okay. So let's crack a clue token. 
planes. Well, we could use that to discard to Sunscorch Champion. So if we do that next turn, we're going to gain 8 life. We will be back at 20 and we'll have a 4-4 four, four to attack our opponent with. Not the worst thing. Well, never mind. They play a Torrential Gear Hulk. That's a little bit bigger. And they target a Glimmer of Genius, drawing 2 more cards. So opponent's turn. 8 cards in hand. Going to take 5 here. Uh, so they attack us for 5. We go down to 7. That's fine. Cast out. Targeting Panharmonicon, I'm guessing. Yep. Okay, so we're not going to gain 8 life. Let's uh, crack a clue token in response. Handware Militia Captain. Not great. Yeah. And we draw another land. Well, let's bring in Sun Scourge Champion. Pay 4. Discard a land. Gain 4 life. We'll also eternalize the other one. Discard another land. So we go to 15. And we've got 8 damage on the field. Don't know if our opponent's still going to attack us or not. Glimmer of Genius. Okay, so they draw 2 more cards. Go to 7. That's fine. We're going to pass for now. So if they attack for 5, we go to 10 and then they would be at 11. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well. Or that happens. Quarantine Field is going to exile both of our tokens. And then we're going to go to 10, probably, I assume. Opponent goes to combat and attacks for 5. So we go to 10. Well, we can kill the Gear Hulk. I just don't know if it's going to resolve. Oh, Angel of Invention. I mean, we would go to 5, which is dangerous. But then we have Lifelink. I think we're going to play Dusk. Kill that Gear Hulk, unless it gets countered. Um, yeah. Disallow, sure. So... If only we could, uh, cast at Dawn. But we'll play Handwear Militia Captain. It's a 2-2, which is, uh, not quite as big as the Gear Hulk. So, I, I might just chump block just to try to push this game for another turn. Um, opponent puts a token into play. This is just, uh, a very not good game for us. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna block that. I just want to, uh, sustain my life total for a couple more turns. Gideon, well, shoot. Um, this is bad. I don't know if there's a way for us to not lose. Panharmonicon. Uh, we can't play both of those in a single turn, which is too bad. I think we're gonna play Angel of Invention. Yeah, we're gonna put, we're gonna give it, uh, plus one, plus one counters. So now, our opponent can't attack with a token. So we're only gonna go down to, oh. Or a Stasis Snare. Um, yeah. And we were drawing an island. We're going to bring in Padim because this game is going to go long. So just that card advantage is going to be good. We're going to take out, um, Dolly's Lancer. Nah, let's take out a Panharmonicon and an Oketra's Monument because we can't just, we can't get value out of them. Um, let's bring in two Negates in favor of some Handware Militias because we can't keep creatures in play. We'll bring in a Dispel and take out another Panharmonicon. And I think that's good. We'll just uh, we'll get into game two and see how this goes. All right, game two, and this game is going long. We've only done one game. We've got at least one, maybe two. Oh, uh, this hand's okay. It's not terrible. Um, that's just, actually it's kind of terrible, but I'm not gonna mulligan. We'll play planes and pass. So I don't know if we're gonna even have enough time to win two games. Um. So, yeah, we draw a Dust to Dawn. Not useful. Um, I probably should have sideboarded those out, actually. But we'll play a Thalia's Lieutenant. We'll just try to assemble a big creature. Um, opponent plays a land and passes. We draw another Thalia's Lieutenant. Um, yeah, I think we want Pious Evangel, though. It resolves. Okay, so we gain one life. Thalia's Lieutenant becomes a 2 2. Go to combat. Attack for 2, opponent goes to 18, wait, maybe not. Um, Ether Meltdown, that's an interesting choice, haven't seen that played a lot, but it worked. Let's go with Handware Militia Captain, see if this resolves. Cast Out is cycled, okay. It does resolve though, so we gain 1 life. We're gonna play Thalia's Lieutenant, opponent cycles Hieroglyphic Illumination. We gain one life. Our stuff gets bigger. We go to combat. Attack for three. 
point it goes to 16 and we will pass so it's looking pretty good for a uh you know a control matchup a uh, hand where militia captain is going to flip next turn provided they don't kill anything all right so here we go so that's a 4-4 now we draw in a catch at the true but we will go to combat Attack with everything. Opponent goes to 6. So we'll play Oketra the True. See if this gets countered. Uh, Sensor. Okay, that's fine. So opponent's at 6. I mean, we could just win this game super quick if they don't have a way to uh, just deal with all these creatures. I did say in the deck tech that this deck, you know, it feels very different in every single game. And this is, uh, this is our human tribal deck, I guess. Our human aggro tribal deck. Which is going to work good against blue control, I guess. So, yeah. That's, uh, that's going to work for us. If our opponent can't kill the uh, the cult leader... Um, actually... No, they have to kill... Okay, no, there we go. They concede. Holy crap, that was good. That was a, a very different game compared to the last one. That felt completely different. So, yeah, maybe we should just uh, get rid of Monument and Panharmonicon and just go with the Tribal Humans deck. So, we'll take out two more Panharmonicons. We're not even going to worry about that. We're just gonna go all in and try to uh, try to kill our opponent quick. So uh, that was just that was a sideboarding mistake in game one, but uh, it worked for us, and now we have a much more aggressive deck. All right, final game of match one. Oh, we're mana screwed. We're gonna mulligan. No, no, don't, don't. Oh my god. Uh, we're gonna keep this. Four cards, one land. Thought you lieutenant has to go to the bottom because it's not a land. Another thought used within it. Well, I wonder if that was the infamous MTGO being stupid and not putting that at the bottom. Or did I misclick? I don't know. Oh, we do draw a second land though. That's nice. So let's play Thought Use Lieutenant because let's get something in play. Nope. Essence Scatter. Okay, well, sure. We mulligan down to four. We have two O'Catcher's Monument, which isn't super useful. Padim, we can't play it. Pass. Opponent plays a land. And passes. We draw Pious Evangel. We're gonna pass. Oh, this is this sucks. Opponent plays a land and passes. We draw an Angel of Invention. We're gonna pass. This is just bad. Opponent plays a Shielded Ether Thief. Sure. We draw an island. I mean, it's a land. Let's just run out O'Catcher's Monument. It's gonna get countered, I think. It does not get countered. You know, maybe your opponent is flooded. We're mana screwed. Their mana flooded. That could be a thing that's happening. Uh, or they can just play Torrential Gear Hulk. Okay, so. How are we gonna deal with that? Oh, we really can't. Um, we're gonna take 5, go to 15, cast out. Targeting the monument. Okay. We get a cloud blazer, which we can't play. Uh, I guess we just run out another monument for now. I want to start generating tokens so I can jump block with them. Because uh, we don't have any other way to deal with the gear hulk. Other than throwing a token in front of it every turn. So we're going to take 5, go to 10. Draw a planes. Okay, well we're getting land now. Let's play pious evangel for 2. Get a token. Gain 1 life. Maybe, if our opponent doesn't want to counter it. Um, it resolves, okay. So we gain one, go to 11. Play the other Pious Evangel, gain one life. Then the Pious Evangel goes into play. And we gain two life, maybe. The opponent likes to let stuff sit on the stack even when they don't have anything. So we go to 14. We've got some tokens to block with now. The opponent cracks a Blighted Cataract for some cards. And we will pass. Opponent attacks for 5. So we will throw a token in front of that. We draw a planes. Okay. Do we want to do Cloud Blazer or Angel of Invention? I think we're going to go with Angel of Invention. So we get a token. We gain 2 life from that token. Sensor gets cycled. Sure. We get a Warrior token. We gain 2 life. Angel of Invention comes into play. And we gain 2 more life. So we go to 18. Um, I think we're going to get servos just for more life. So we gain four or more. We go to 22. And I don't think it hurts to just attack. So we will attack with everything. Opponent goes to 15. Uh, cycles a hieroglyphic illumination. 
They attack with a Torrential Gearhulk. I think we can just take it. And then just attack with everything next turn. That's fine. Oh, or they can just play Fumigate. So they go to 24 and everything's dead. Fortunately, we do have that Padim and Cloud Blazer to refill our hand. I think we're going to go into Cloud Blazer. Um, get a token. Gain two life. Draw two cards. Hand wear Militia Captain. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Because uh, it will flip next turn. If our opponent can't deal with it. So that kind of works in our favor. Oh, or that happens. Everything gets exiled. They get a 4-4 four, four token. Draw a land. So we'll try to run out Padim. Um, they haven't been countering much this game. Which uh, is fine with me. Cycles a Hieroglyphic Illumination. Padim resolves. So that's nice. So we're going to start drawing an extra card every turn. Opponent cycles a Sensor. Attacks for 4. We go to 15. Glimmer of Genius to draw 2 cards. We draw... Two lands, wow. That's uh, that's kind of a bummer. So I guess we're going to attack for two. Opponent's going to go to 22. I mean, I'm just happy to be in this game after the way it started. Being that mana screwed and not being dead. Uh, that's one of the downsides of control. Um, control decks just can't really capitalize when an opponent has a misstep like that. So that was a, that was a good thing for us. Because against an aggro deck, we would have been screwed. Uh, we draw... Another Catcher's Monument. I guess we can run that out. Wait. Mm, no, it's it's legendary. Uh, oops. I... That was just like an automatic response. Like, oh, hey, Catcher's Monument. Let's play that. Uh, that's... It's, it's legendary. Well... Oops. We'll still... We'll play Pious Evangel. Get a token. Gain a life. We'll attack for two. Bring our opponent down to 20. That was just a stupid mistake. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter right now. We'll see if, uh... They have to kill Padim to even target the uh, Okecha's Monument. But in the event that that happens, I'm going to be sad. Because uh, that should have happened. Um, opponent uses Westville Abbey to put a token into play. They go down to 19. Quarantine Field for 2. So, they're going to target Pious Evangel and Padim. So, there we go. Now, our, uh, our monument is vulnerable. Um, opponent attacks for 5. I'll, I'll try tokens, sure. So we take four, go to eight. This is looking pretty bad. Draw a Cloud Blazer? Okay, that's not terrible. Let's play that. Um, get a token. Gain two life. Draw two cards. We draw another Cloud Blazer and a Handwear Militia Captain. Um, let's play the other Cloud Blazer. Get another token. Gain two more life. Draw two more cards. Um, let's run out Handwear Militia Captain. So that will flip next turn if it survives. We drew a negate, but we don't have uh, mana for it. But uh, we'll, we'll attack for one. Opponent goes to 18. Opponent's running out of time too. I really don't want this game to go to time. Hopefully they can, uh, you know, pick up the pace a bit. They pass. That's not picking up the pace, but uh, it's understandable. Um, Militia Captain flips, so that's nice. Two negates, well, hey. It looks like we are running the control deck now. We're going to attack with the captain. Or with the cult leader now. Opponent puts a token into play. So they chump block. That's fine. We get a token from the cult leader. Opponent casts a hieroglyphic illumination. I'm going to counter that. Because I don't want them drawing cards. Negate. Uh, oh well. I guess I'll negate your negate. We got a stack of negates going on here. I really don't want them drawing cards. They're low on cards, and that's good for us playing against the control deck, especially with the current board state. So, don't want them drawing. Uh, we're going to take four, go to eight. But we're looking good right now. Land. Uh, uh, yeah, we can just attack with everything. Um, opponent. Oh, they're Westfall Abbey's tap. Eat their meltdown. Okay. So, opponent goes to four. So, um, I'm pretty sure we have this, actually. Unless they can, uh, or well, they could cast like a Fumigate or something, that would be bad. But, for now, it's looking good. Opponent's gonna attack for four. I think they're just kind of giving in. Um, yeah, we go to four. Draw a land, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna attack. That should be the game. Unless they have something up their sleeve. No. Wow, jeez, after that first game, that went so long. And then we got mana screwed in game three, and we still pulled it off. I guess that's game one with uh, Panhar Monument, as I'm calling it. That was a long, grindy game. And I have a feeling I'm in for four more games like this. Uh, well, 
that's a that's a win. That's a win. That's a one and zero record so far with Panhard Monument, the awkward, weird, ridiculous deck that you know probably shouldn't be a thing. But hey, it's uh, it's worked for us there. We didn't get to see it in full force because our stuff was being countered constantly. But you kind of get the idea is that you can come very close to death and then just gain so much life, get yourself back in the game, and you're just constantly sustaining yourself until you hit, you know, some sort of game finisher. So, uh, I guess that's, uh, again, that's, that's the first game with Panhard Monument. I hope you enjoyed. I, I'm tired, personally, but, uh... Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's game one. We're one and oh. If you like this deck, check the description. There should be a playlist. And I will see you in the second match.